Culture in Motion. I'm your host today, Kat, and I am here with Dr. Mary Morrow of Champion Healthcare and Nephrology. Dr. Morrow is a nephrologist, not to be confused with neurologist, which is a doctor that studies the brain, but she is a nef nephrologist. And we're going to ask Dr. Morrow what is a nephrologist and what it is that she does. Hi, Dr. Morrow, how are you? Just fine. Thank you, Carla, for having me today. Can you tell us a little bit what a nephrologist is and what do you do? Hopefully most people have never heard of nephrology. If you have, then you know that nephrology is the science dealing with kidney diseases. In short, oftentimes a nephrologist is thought of as a dialysis doctor. So if you or anyone in the family or friends, neighbors, church members have ever had any uh, inter interactivity with someone that's on dialysis, then you've heard of the word nephrologist or nephrology. Mm -hmm. The study of very closely diseases. linked with the study of kidney diseases mm -hmm. is the study of hypertension also. Okay. So most nephrologists will advertise as hypertension specialists as well as Talk about kidney one of the diseases specialists. that you specialize in hypertension. That is a big thing right now with a lot of people. What is hypertension? Just tell the viewers what, what that is exactly. There is elevation of the arterial blood pressure and for our population, our ethnic group, it is just rampant for hypertension. What can we do to kind of take care of ourselves if we have it? There is no um, one direct cure. The best that we can do is to control the symptoms and that is Unfortunately, some people don't believe in medication, but I do. Um, but also, along with medication, diet and exercise are at the forefront of that. Sometimes a person may be able to discontinue certain medications as long as they are dieting, as long as they are exercising. Now, there are certain diseases uh, related to hypertension mm -hmm. where there are other treatments, but we generally call that secondary well, cause range of blood pressure. I would say uh, systolic 90 over diastolic um, 55. Okay. 95, 90 over 55 on the low side. Right. And then on the high side, the recommendations keep changing, and the current recommendation of uh, current goals that I choose for my patients systolic 130, diastolic 80. If their blood pressure is in that range, I'm very, very happy. Okay. So I tell the patients when they're coming in with a blood pressure of 180 over 110, mm -hmm. our goal blood pressure now is 130 over 80. Mm -hmm. Previously, during my initial training, normal was 140 over 90. Some of now, that I would like for the audience, um, anyone viewing this program, ask your doctor mm -hmm. for a urinalysis. Also, um, blood pressure screening. I mean, go to the free clinics mm -hmm. um, and um, health fairs, get your blood pressure checked. Um, ask for a referral to see someone if there's protein in your urine or blood in your urine. Mm -hmm. Now, the test that we as nephrologists look at the most is called the creatinine. Okay. And we'll discuss our genetic predisposition. As I said, it's very rampant in my family. At some point in time, uh, no matter how many diets I'm on, how much I exercise, I would anticipate that I would probably still get it because both my parents have it. Yeah. And now two siblings have it, one brother and one sister. Um, however, it's also lifestyle related. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to watch our weight. We need yeah. to eat as healthy as we can. Mm -hmm. um, it directly with exercise. the kidney disease is anemia. And I'll explain that further. And that's a big part of the management, not just the hypertension management, but the anemia management, as well as the overall, it, it's a part of taking care of a kidney patient. Okay. All right. Um, specifically, though, the number one sign that I see um, as far as someone on their way to needing dialysis, in addition to fatigue, nausea and vomiting, mm. nausea and vomiting. Um, also, loss of appetite, wow. itching, mm -hmm. bad taste in your mouth, mm -hmm. um, bloating, mm. swelling, 
whether it's swelling around the eyes or a okay. swelling of your legs and feet. Okay. Okay, those are some of the big signs to look for. Sometimes swelling of the legs and feet may be related to the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I also, from my standpoint, I'm always looking at is this patient headed towards kidney failure or heart failure, or is it a combination of the two? What we call end stage renal disease when a person's kidneys have stopped working, mm -hmm. stopped filtering, stopped purifying the blood, stopped getting rid of waste in the body, mm -hmm. then we have several alternatives, the main category being dialysis. All right, whether it's hemodialysis, a person goes to a center three times a week mm -hmm. and they are hooked up to a machine either via a catheter or some type of dialysis access in the arm, we call that a fistula or a graft, mm -hmm. okay? Um, oftentimes if their veins and arteries are not suitable, a surgeon may go to their legs, wow. okay? But initially at the start, a lot of times, especially if a patient has not been followed by a nephrologist, they often will have a catheter first. Mm -hmm. We don't like to use catheters long term, only short term. It's a temporary um, situation because catheters lead to infections. Yeah. Okay, catheters lead to a higher risk for infection. So as soon as we can get that catheter out, mm -hmm. we try to get that out and get a permanent access where we know someone is now in end stage renal disease and will require mm -hmm. dialysis hemodialysis in particular. Then the second type of dialysis is called peritoneal dialysis. Oftentimes people want to stay at home. Mm -hmm. They feel more comfortable in their own home. They want to have some control over their disease state. Mm -hmm. And we encourage them to do peritoneal dialysis. Fluid is, quote, pumped into their abdominal area, their abdominal cavity, the peritoneal cavity, mm -hmm. and then it's drained out several times a day or once a day, often overnight, but it's over an eight to 10 hour period, their blood is being cleansed through this peritoneal dialysis. In fact, that's one of my favorite types of dialysis is peritoneal dialysis, because it just gives you more freedom and flexibility mm -hmm. to do your dialysis when it's convenient for you. Oh, that's great. I mean, otherwise, you're on a schedule three times a week, mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Saturday, and then you adjust your lifestyle around that schedule. Whereas with peritoneal dialysis, you dialyze. You know you have to do it every day, yeah. but you do it according to your schedule. That is wonderful technology. We're just growing the technology. And there's more flexibility, more flexibility to travel with peritoneal dialysis because you just take your supplies with you. Wow. And you do it in your hotel or at your mom's house or your son's house or oh, wow. wherever you're traveling, in your hotel room. There's more flexibility with peritoneal dialysis. Now, just because you're on hemodialysis, dialysis, mm -hmm. you still will have an opportunity to travel. Mm -hmm. You just work with your social worker mm -hmm. and other staff members at your dialysis center mm -hmm. and try to prearrange it as far in advance as possible. Thank you for that. Dr. Ma, right now we're going to ask you to take a look at that camera and let the viewers know what it is that they can do to prevent all of this and just basically give a summary of everything that we spoke about. The most important thing again, diet, exercise, follow up with your doctor, your primary care physician. Um, if you're looking into the telephone book, if you have a strong family history of kidney disease, please ask your doctor for a urinalysis, number one. Get your blood pressure checked. Get your blood sugar checked. Um, get the screening test that you need and give me a call. That's a lot of information that we discussed today with Dr. Morrow, but if you would like more information, you can come visit her or give her a call. The location is Maximum Retail Center, 7525 Suite D, Covington Highway, 30058 in Georgia. Telephone number is 770-484-4842.